uh, we uh, start a kind of a program. It's called Cacao Trace. And that means that we have the 100% traceability of our cacao beans. And we improve also the quality of our chocolates by teaching the farmers in the countries. There you are. Jeffrey, <laughs> it's so lovely to talk to you. Yes, it's uh, either my pleasure. That's great. And um, tell me, you are a chocolatier. And but, uh, uh, just correct me here. You are a chocolatier? Yes, I'm and a, a chocolatier. Chef. And a pastry chef? Uh, we do also pastry, but not really the focus of our job. It's really chocolate applications. I see. And is this what you were trained to do, to work in yes. chocolate? Okay. Yes, indeed. Yeah. But tell me, where does this fascination with chocolate come from? Or the oh. interest? <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah, like uh, a long time ago when I was four years old, yeah. uh, I was uh, baking with my grandmother some biscuits, some cookies, uh, some, some pastry items, let's say. And uh, from that moment, I was already really, uh, yeah, triggered by, by the pastry and the bakery industry. Yeah? So I really love to bake. I, I, I love to, to continue this, this process in the future because uh, when you are four years old and you know already uh, what you want to do in your life, yes. it's quite fast. So everybody told me, yeah, but every young guy have a, have a dream. Uh, but mainly, I, you, you, you never uh, like a police, a police officer or a firefighter. You know, it's yeah. So I say I want to be be a baker. Yeah. yeah. And um, it was actually from the beginning in my yeah, in my my body in that heart. I want to do it. Yeah, in my heart. Yeah. yeah. But uh, is there is there in your family a bakers or, or people who made no. a career of it? Nobody. Okay. No, no, nobody. No, 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 and. In Belgium, we have uh, in Belgium and mainly Europe, uh, not not all countries in Europe, but like in France, Germany, we have secondary schools where you can start immediately uh, the lessons of a bakery school. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So uh, so we have uh, five schools in Belgium uh, where you can go from twelve years old from your secondary school starts uh, to continue like. Uh, on the bakery, butcher, uh, cooking, so you can directly actually choose your direction from your secondary school, uh, what you want to do in, in, in your life. Well, now, as a young child, did you continuously experiment in the kitchen? I mean, was it some, you know, did you, did you show, kept showing this interest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was, yeah, of course, when you are four years old, you're, <laughs> you're not really uh, clean yeah. in mind uh, about, about the future. But uh, I start to, yeah, to, to continue my research uh, in chocolates, especially in chocolate, because uh, I visit a lot of uh, chocolate years when I was really young with my parents. And when I was already eight years old, I start to ask the, the girl from the pastry and, and chocolate shop what is in the filling what combination you use really? which chocolate you use and uh, I know she was looking at me from you're you're a child and you ask yeah. me that kind of questions and that interest is is it was growing growing every year and when I was 12 years old uh, I had a chance my parents uh, give me the chance to do this direction in the secondary school because these kind of schools are really expensive also in Belgium uh, because yeah of course the price for the for all yeah, all the the materials and everything that you need for for this uh, for this school uh, and uh, I did my school uh, like to 18 years old at the normal secondary school period and then I specialized in uh, in chocolates so I did uh, extra school uh, for the chocolates especially uh, chocolate applications and not pastry and bakery. Oh, I see. Okay. But now chocolate in itself, um, you know, it's a, it's, I think we don't understand always that what every, what goes into making chocolate and, and all the ingredients that have to be 
uh, top quality to make top quality chocolate. Do you think people are educated in that sense? Do you think they they well, really understand uh, that it's that there's such a great taste difference in artisan yeah. chocolate and and just commercial chocolate? Yeah, of course you have a, you have on the market for the moment you have a, yeah so many uh, manufacturers producing chocolate uh, applications. Eh? Um, I'm working actually as a chocolatier in a, in a chocolate company and our company produce chocolate, just the ingredient chocolate. And so we produce here in Belgrade, in Belgium, our uh, Belgian chocolates, real Belgian chocolates. And uh, what is my job here? We don't sell finished products. So all the products that I prepare here, they're not to sell. They are to inspire our customers. So chocolatiers. Oh. Chocolatiers buy our chocolates eh, to, to make products out of it eh, because not all chocolatiers are able to make bean to bar chocolates to yeah. produce their, their products, of course, because a chocolatier is, is mainly somebody make the product and not really make from bean to bar. Eh. Mm -hmm. So they buy the chocolates. Our chocolate is, 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 uh, is chocolate that the chocolatier can just melt and start to continue his process to produce oh, uh, chocolate applications. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. You have so some. You, uh, yeah. You get the beans and do you roast the beans as well? Yeah. So our our factory we have a different yeah stalls uh, in 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 the world let's say, but uh, our chocolate is one hundred percent produced here in Belgium. That's why we have the label of the real Belgian chocolate here in Belgium. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, we produce here uh, our full yeah our full production process we have we have here in in, in Belgrad, but I'm out of the the factory part of this. We are yeah. here in a in an innovation center, a chocolate center, uh, where we create with our chocolates, with our origins, our special references of chocolates, uh, different taste profiles and combination with uh, with fillings and combinations. And we uh, we inspire our customers. So customers, they buy our chocolate, they work with our chocolate. We support them if they want to work on new creativity ideas and new uh, new uh, yeah, concepts, let's say. So we are really innovating every day here in, in Belkolat to really inspire our customers every time again and again to, yeah, to improve their business and also to, yeah, to share our passion for chocolate because we are really Passionate, of course. I never worked one day in my life. I oh, really, because you love your day, job. <laughs> every day I arrive uh, on my job, let's say, but uh, I'm, to be honest, it's the, it's the greatest job in the world to be really? chocolate team, so. <laughs> But now what is it that, that makes Belgium chocolate, uh, Belgium chocolate? What is that? What's the yeah. uh, secret? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> no, uh, it's uh, actually the way of production and the way how okay. we produce our chocolate. So, of course, uh, the beans coming from different countries in the world, uh, uh, they will become drying, fermenting and everything. Uh, but uh, when they arrive in, uh, in Belkolat, we the process of producing uh, the chocolate is really the typical way. So. You have different uh, uh, eta etap etapes, eh? yeah. different uh, in the production process that makes uh, really uh, Belgian chocolate on the typical Belgian way. Eh? Hmm. Uh, it's uh, about the good conching of the chocolates that makes really sense for the taste. It's already beginning from the fermentation in the country of the harvests. If you have a bad fermentation, uh, you have re even with a good cacao bean, you can have a bad uh, chocolate, let's say. So it's really from the beginning, the fermentation in the countries. And then when it arrives in Belgium, it's really a typical Belgian way. So all the etapes are really important in production of the chocolate. But what makes Belgian chocolate so special? It's just the way how we produce on the typical Belgian way the chocolate. Oh, I see. But now you talk about the fermentation, and I actually did never knew that chop, that the beans are, are being fermented. Um, I saw a little um, uh, clip uh, on YouTube about this fermentation process. Now you say this is important, even if it's a good bean, if the fermentation process is not good, then in what way does that affect 
the, yeah. the chocolate? Yeah, so, so first of all, um, fermentation is actually the base of the final taste of your chocolate. Eh? If you're talking about the origin chocolate, eh, it's like a coffee bean, it's coming from one country. Eh? So that bean have especially some special taste notes inside. And by a good, good qualitative uh, fermentation, you improve the final taste. Eh? So like I mentioned, with a, with a good bean and a bad fermentation, you will receive not the bad chocolate, but less a quality. Than, yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. And uh, that's why our company, Belcolade, uh, Puratos, so our main company is Puratos, but we are Belcolade, the chocolate department. Uh, we uh, start a kind of a program. It's called Cacao Trace. And that means that we have the 100% traceability of our cacao beans. And we improve also the quality of our chocolates by teaching the farmers in the countries. So we teach our local farmers in all the countries how they can do the good fermentation, how they can improve their, their, their uh, cacao beans, how they can work on a really good uh, qualitative uh, cacao bean. Then we can even make better chocolates here in Belgium. Uh, uh, we do th we do that by uh, post harvest centers. So we put uh, like different post harvest centers in our uh, our uh, cacao countries, and the cacao farmers uh, we receive in the post harvest centers the the the, the cacao farmers with the beans uh, to deliver, yeah. and there we check also the quality and we control uh, the fermentation. So when every farmer do separate the fermentation, you have a different uh, knowledge because the farmers maybe in fermentation, they are less known. So okay. we, we help them to have a really good uh, qualitative fermentation in our post harvest centers. And also our cacao trace program give, uh, give, a, uh, yeah, of course, a fair price to the, to the, to the to the farmers and we have also for one kilo we have a 10 cent extra bonus for them so we give them also a 10 cent oh, one see. kilo chocolate mm -hmm. bonus eh? and also we uh, we improve uh, we improve the let's say the life uh, over there by uh, in some countries we have already schools for the children wow and also uh, to give them a drinkable water and really to it's a, it's the cacao trade is it's a full a full yeah. program of improving uh, the quality of the chocolates but also improve their lives and also yeah make them uh, I, make them uh, yeah known and also uh, yeah a better life of course eh? Yeah, and of course that that makes a full circle then because then they uh, will also uh, be proud of what they're doing and and uh, and be inspired to do. But now, why does the why does the cocoa bean have to be uh, fermented there on the farm? Is it not something that you can ferment, say, in your factory? No, no, it's 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 actually impossible because when you harvest your 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 cacao uh, pots, eh, mm -hmm. when you break it your pot in two, you have actually small beans uh, sitting together with a white white uh, pulp kind of a pulp, yeah, and it need to be first drying, so the pulp need to uh, remove from the from the beans, and then the fermentation process start immediately, also. The conditions in that country, the temperature, the sun, all oh, these kind of, uh, of of natural elements influence the the taste profile of, of your beans. Eh? Yeah. Uh, so we can't just harvest them, put them in bags, and bring them to Belgium, because then, uh, of course, you have a let's say no fermentation process, and they will become yeah bad in the the, the time that they delivered in Belgium. So the fermentation is, is mainly always in the, the region of the, the harvest uh, area. Yes. That's so interesting. I never realized that. And it's, uh, so that is, um, so that climate is important for the chocolate. Is that also how you source the chocolate? Um, yes. Or, yeah, or yeah, do you yeah, have a course, specific yeah. taste that you, that you want? 
Oh, um, I don't know exactly how many origins and, uh, and chocolates we have, uh, but uh, if you want to really go in a special taste uh, profile of chocolates, we always uh, combine with origins uh, because origins have that special taste mm -hmm. profile. And in every country, in every region of every country, you have specific uh, areas where you can find more the notes of, for example, grapes and the other region, more, uh, more the reason and um, notes in your chocolate so really depending the region and the country the temperature the humidity the kind of cacao bean you have yeah, because mainly we have a, we have a lot of different uh, cacao bean uh, kind of you have for example the criollo the forastero the trintario so all kind of like like wine and yeah, you have different kind of wines it's yeah. like the chocolate is the same depending also uh, the kind of, of, of bean you have so all these factors influence uh, the notes, your final uh, taste in your chocolate. Eh? We're talking about notes. They are natural in the chocolate. Eh? We never add okay. something to the chocolate. It's always natural, the notes uh, of, of the chocolates inside. Eh? Mm -hmm. And that's uh, depending the region, uh, of course. Yeah. So now you must have a extremely good uh, taste sense to be able to taste these different yeah. thing, uh, the oh. chocolates. Yeah, yeah, we, we try we try that, but it's something also that you need to, people people are not known because tasting is really difficult. Huh? Mm. Um, in school, we did also some, some practice and, and, and tasting uh, tests. For example, we color a, a mousse of banana yeah. pink. Yeah. So if you see the mousse, you think ah, it's strawberry, strawberry, raspberry. You oh, eat, yeah. but it's banana. Yeah. And even it's a really easy taste profile. Banana, raspberry, strawberry, everybody knows it. But 90% of the people sign on the paper, it's uh, raspberry or strawberry and not banana. Really? But it was just with red coloring. Just the, it's, it's the visual is already more than 50% of the taste. Eh? If something looks good and you taste it and it's worst, still at the end, people will love it mm. because it's looking good. And that's also a big trend now. Eh? The visual need to be really, it's really important. And after the taste profile, even when the taste profile is not really top, really good, yeah. people will love it. Eh? Mm. When something looks bad, automatically already people will don't eat it or will not taste it even when it's uh, great huh? and after yeah. they will say ah oh, the taste was good but it looks worst so tasting is also with your eyes mm -hmm. people don't know it and tasting recognize tastes it's really difficult because sometimes if we launch a new origin here in, in Belkolab we always uh, try to find the notes that we that we really recognize in these chocolates and to be honest, for me, still is uh, it's really difficult to to really find the exact notes that you that yeah. you can find in that chocolate. But it's important for us because after we need to combine it with additional ingredients in pralines, in bonbons, mm -hmm. in combinations, because we combine always uh, the combination that fits or going well with the notes oh, yeah. of the of the chocolates that you can find finding in the chocolates, you have a, a, a right, uh, right combination of, of your finished product. Mm. But you can, you can for sure taste uh, a good chocolate uh, against a uh, not so good chocolate, I'm sure. Yeah, of yeah. course, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> it, that, are, that's are, also. Are you a bit of a chocolate snob or do you eat? Um... Uh, I always say I, today I don't eat chocolates, but then already after five minutes in the morning, oh, really? I start with chocolates. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. But sometimes uh, in the evening, I like to eat something salty because your, your mouth is full with the yeah. sweetener of, 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 of all your combinations and you need to taste them. Yeah. So uh, in the evening, I like something salty to, to eat. Of course, yeah. But um, uh, the other thing that I also um, heard was that a chocolate have to have a specific sound, you know, when you snap it. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, chocolates, uh, to work with chocolates, it's another story. Uh, so your chocolate is produced. 
But to work with chocolate, that's actually the job of a chocolatier. Yeah. A chocolatier starts from chocolate to make a final product out of it. We have some small chocolatiers, they make the bean to bar in a small uh, quantity in their shops. Yeah. But mainly a chocolatier buy from a company as Belcolat the chocolate oh. to continue their work. Eh? So a chocolatier, chocolatier starts from a melted chocolate and he uh, work with the chocolate to have the final uh, application, final products. Mm. But of course, the chocolate is a quite a difficult, uh, let's say, a difficult uh, material. It's a quite difficult uh, object to work with because chocolate uh, can, I, you need to think about a lot of uh, parameters. Uh, temperatures, um, all kind of, of, of these things to have a final good final product, a shiny snap, the good the good snap like. Yeah. Uh, also, also the self life is really important for us. So when uh, when the chocolatier have the final product, the customer buy from the chocolatier that those products have a good self life that they will be not coming bad after one week. So all these kind of parameters influence the tempering of the chocolate. So when your temper tempering of chocolate is not correct in the beginning, you have a bad final result, no shiny, no snap. It's a lot of parameters, but the main parameters are the shine and the snap. So you need to bring the chocolate in a good uh, condition so yeah. that you can't melt your chocolate and produce something. You need to temper your chocolate, pre-crystallization we call it, to uh, the right temperature, to continue your work, to receive a good uh, qualitative final product like the snap and the shine. Yeah. So, uh, so it's a quite, uh, so you have a bakery, patisserie and chocolate is completely something else than, than this too, oh, because it's yeah. a lot of temperatures and parameters for bakery also, eh? for bakery, of course, it's also important for pastry, but for chocolate is, is something, something else. It's something more specific on the temperature, the time, the, it's a quite a difficult uh, materi to, to yeah. work with. So uh, basically when you eat artisan chocolate, you have to think of somebody really, or, or this whole process that you were talking about now, from the beans, from the fermenting, from the people involved, um, from all the work that your company is doing. So uh, it's really worth buying a good quality chocolate. To eat. Yeah, to yeah, eat. for sure, for sure. Yes, but of course, the good quality chocolate have also the price uh, because the yeah. price of the chocolate is. But this is what I'm thinking now. If you think of this whole process, then you know it's it's worth paying a little bit more for a good quality chocolate. Yeah, 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 yeah indeed. And actually, people pay it eh? if it's really qualitative chocolates. Uh, they pay it. Uh, um, but sometimes well-known chefs, uh, very high known chocolatiers, sometimes I think the price is a bit too much because sometimes uh, it's like 140 euro for one kilo. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a lot. So because they're famous, of course, they can ask more. Uh, yeah. But I know uh, very good qualitative chocolatiers working with great uh, ingredients, just in different regions in Belgium, they are not known, but for sure the quality is, is incredible, even better than the famous ones. Really? But the price, of course, is, is less because when you are, uh, yeah, in, when you are here in, in small regions in Belgium, of course, you have more the local people, less the tourists, the touristic people. But to be honest, sometimes uh, not all chocolatiers are really known here in Belgium. But uh, I know uh, a lot from them. They have they're really high level. Quality. Mm. So and that's that's nice in my job because I know uh, I know a lot of chocolatiers eh, because we help them also by combinations and we receive them. We see them on, on exhibitions. We see them sometimes if we have an event. So we really known. Uh, I re we really known in the markets here in, in Belgium and also on the international market. Because actually, I, I never uh, visit customers here in, in Belgium. I'm responsible for the international market. Oh, so uh, we have, yeah, yeah. So a colleague from, from my, Mati, is uh, responsible here in, in Belgium. But uh, I don't actually do Belgian uh, events or Belgian customers. It's more 
all uh, all the all countries out of uh, Belgium. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so interesting, your job, really. I can now understand why you love coming to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah I, I really love it. It's really, it's really mm. a passion. Eh? It's, uh, yeah. It's, but yeah, do you it's still, something... yeah, do you still do uh, uh, your own chocolates? I mean, um, do you still make your own chocolates, you know, like, like as a chocolatier? Or is this mainly you do your job? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, that's the base okay. of our job, eh? to make uh, new creations, new ideas, new concepts. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So actually, we are behind the chocolatiers in front of the customer. Oh, I see. Okay. So, for example, uh, let's give a good example. Uh, for example, in Austria, eh? yeah. <laughs> they have. Uh, we went there for a big event uh, four years ago, I think. In the Arts Electronica Center, I don't know that you know that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The event was there in in that. Uh, so, for example, we have um, in a country in Austria, we have, uh, for example, uh, fifteen big customers of chocolates. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They want to be a bit inspired by new ideas, new combinations. So we go there for one week, and we support our local team because we have in all countries also a local team. We support the local team uh, to give a demonstration or. Uh, let's say, a presentation about uh, combinations, new ideas, new concepts. And we receive on, uh, on one place uh, some of the 15 uh, chocolatiers in Austria. For example, I give an example. I just say 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We receive them on one place. And we give them like a, like a, a demonstration presentation about the newest innovations, techniques. And, and after they can, uh, because a lot of time, our chocolatiers are really busy. So they don't have a lot of time uh, to inspire new ideas. So we help them a lot with, with, with new combinations and new ideas. Uh, and also what we do is to go into a country and to go specifically to one customer that we do also, to really do uh, exclusive innovation for that customer. For example, a customer asked me in Austria to, to work specifically for Christmas on uh, five pralines with these combinations. Oh, I, I make I make this, uh, these uh, recipes here in, in, in Belkolade and then I go to the customer in, in Austria to really uh, yeah, finalize the, the production there and to, uh, to give the ID to the chocolate. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's very creative also what you're doing and, and um, uh, in yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes it's more creative because it's difficult now to 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 keep uh, innovating because everybody's yeah. doing that now mm -hmm. so it's really difficult to find uh, something new so uh, to be honest what we see now it's all the classic uh, tastes the classic products are coming back but on a nice way with a nice twist with a nice decoration on it eh? and on this way also we still try to inspire our chocolatiers our customers uh, because the chocolatier is the customer from us and yeah. the consumer is the customer of the chocolatier. Eh? But uh, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult to really inventing, inventing, inventing. It's, it's quite yeah. uh, heavy and it's not always easy. Mm. And it's also, I think people get uh, used to a specific taste and then to sort of re-educate them to or, or to to make them experience or or experiment with a new taste it's probably also a factor that you have to keep in mind yeah and also we travel around the world so every country have its own uh, style of uh, consuming oh, yeah. so for mm -hmm. example in asia it's different than in in us so also uh, we need to take into account if we develop new recipes that they are possible to introduce them in asia but also to introduce them in Canada or in US, for example. Yeah. So all these kind of uh, things make it not always really easy eh? mm -hmm. because we see a lot of uh, nice pictures on Instagram or Facebook uh, from famous people and from a lot of people start to create and innovate. But for us also, the taste is really it's on central mm -hmm. points yeah. because a product can look nice on the picture, but sometimes the taste... But like I already mentioned, if the visual is good, people yeah, love it, of course. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> but still, we try to improve in Belkolat not only visual, but on a nice visual, of course, of course, eh? 
but not a lot of uh, uh, let's say uh, not a lot of bombastic stuff around, but really nice things, but really nice to taste and also possible to reproduce for our customers. Oh, yeah. Because we can make a really creative stuff, but also we need to think that our customers need to reproduce it and remake it in a bigger quantity. And we test it on a couple of uh, items, but they need to be able to reproduce it on a bigger quantity. And if we make a too special creation, they are not always able to make it on the big production. Oh, yeah. Mm. So also, this is important for us. We can make uh, really crazy things to make a nice picture. Everybody loves it. But our customer need to be also able to remake it and to make it on a bigger scale, of course. So all these all this, uh, small, uh, small details are important when you start to... Uh, creating new uh, new innovations. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, maybe um, I, I sometimes think after this pandemic, we've also come to think of things differently, you know, that we have become more appreciative and uh, um, maybe we look at things in a different way. So maybe chocolate will also be seen in a different way. Yeah, yeah, but I think... Chocolate is something that always is 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 known by people as a as a luxury product. Eh? Yeah. So uh, I think after Corona, it will not change uh, that much. Uh, I think more other uh, items in in the in the food industry will change, but I think chocolate will be always uh, appreciated uh, before and after Corona. So yeah. I'm sure of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. But Jeffrey, this was now so wonderful. But I just want to ask you now first, what is your um, what is your wish for the future? My wish for the future? That's a good question. I don't expect <laughs> that question. <laughs> My wish for the future is first of all that uh, that I can for me for me personal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my wish, my wish is that I, yeah, that I can continue what I'm doing because I really love what I'm doing, um, and yeah, it's for me, it's uh, it's one of the most important things in my life. It's working with the chocolate, and my wish is that I uh, can can travel a lot, can share my passion with people uh, from all corners of the world, uh, to share my knowledge, but also to receive a lot of knowledge from them, a lot of information for, from them, because uh, uh, every day you learn. Eh? Yeah. Uh, and when you travel, you share your passion with people that have the same passion as yours, also chocolate. And that makes it great. Uh, traveling for, for my work, it's, it's, it's actually traveling for my pleasure, not for my pleasure. I need to work, but for me, it's not my work, you know that? But it's to, yeah, I'm, I'm really triggered by talking with people. They also working with chocolate. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. So my wish is a lot of travels. Keep going what I'm doing, working with chocolates and uh, making people happy and share my passion for chocolates. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I, I'm sure your wish will come true because you're so enthusiastic and passionate about your work and it's you know we uh, i can sense that and i think people can sense that also when you work with them so that's wonderful yeah sometimes people are saying that i'm a bit too chocolate minded <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, i can't okay, see well. anything wrong with that <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah everything what i'm thinking is, is chocolate when it's i visit chocolate. in the weekend a shop with my girlfriend we think for some small decoration at home and start already to think, ah, maybe this decoration is nice to make a mood out of it. Oh, okay. To out of it. <laughs> so I'm always thinking in chocolate uh, terms. <laughs> and then when, my, when, my, when my girlfriend say, ah, this is nice, I say, ah, yeah, it's really nice, but I will buy this because I think in chocolate it will be this. And uh, <laughs> you think always like chocolate, chocolate, it's weekend. <laughs> Don't think about work, but yeah, it's, it's something. Uh, you know. Yeah, but that's, that's, I love it. I think this is wonderful. This is actually how it should be, you know, that, yeah, that yeah. Uh, work should be so part of you and it should be, I mean, I don't think there, there, um, 
or I think many people would love to have a job where they, um, you know, where they feel that passionate about. So I think it's wonderful. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm really happy with the, with the job I have here because we do everyday new things. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so it's, it's great, yes. Now, listen, uh, Jeffrey, I, uh, I want you to make a shout out. I would ask you to make a shout out to, I see you drink coffee, but uh, uh, can you make a shout out to uh, for your favorite restaurant or coffee shop or um, in, in your area that you visit regularly? Oh, actually, uh, yeah, I visit a lot of, uh, of, yeah. of shops and, and when I travel, yeah, they take me always out to such a uh, but um, I was not expecting that. But uh, Starbucks in Seattle, yeah, Seattle is the is, yeah you know Seattle. It's it's in US. It's it's it's, mm -hmm. it's a, a region in US. It's um, I was not a big fan of Starbucks, but it's yeah. the Starbucks is born over there in Seattle, mm -hmm. and there they have really the exclusive uh, reservas. So the reserva uh, coffee shops. They have like a bakery inside. They have a pastry uh, pro uh, production inside. They have all exclusive coffees of Starbucks. And there I learned to appreciate also, yeah, for me, Starbucks is not the best coffee taste in the world, but I really, it was impressive. The marketing behind the shop, the how they how they welcome the people. It's It's fantastic. And uh, then you go into a small, uh, they take me out to a small shop. Uh, and it was the first Starbucks shop in the world. It's born in Seattle. Eh? Yeah. And I love it because in US, everybody's uh, running in the morning with a big cup of Starbucks in the hand, yeah. uh, running in the streets. And uh, I really love the concept. Eh? Yeah. So it's not always, uh, not always liking the product, but also the, the concept and the marketing behind and that is also really important and that I really love. Uh, so, yeah, the Starbucks in Seattle, for sure, it's one of my uh, most impressive visits of, uh, of uh, marketing and, and shop-wise, uh, how, uh, how they improve on, on, on innovative and, and, and even with just a coffee producer like Starbucks. So. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I actually um, heard about this story uh, how they started, you know, the how it was just that this idea of having uh, the ability to get coffee on the go or just a quick coffee. And I also think it's such a wonderful um, concept, you know, that they have. Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, thank you very much for this shout out. I'll, I'll put I'll put a link and um, uh, specifically for Seattle, for the Starbucks in Seattle. Yes, Starbucks in Seattle. Yes, but it was a great travel to Seattle. Uh, also, it was a was a nice uh, nice visit there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great region. Enjoy your day making chocolate. Thank you very much. And you I hope much. to see you in Vienna one day. For sure. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.